Good afternoon. I am Dr. Rajen Prasad. I am Director, Medical Education and Head Pulmonary Medicine, ERAS Lucknow Medical College, Lucknow. I have been former Director, Vallabhai Patel Chest Institute, Delhi, and Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, SAFI. I have also been the professor and head pulmonary medicine in KG Medical University for a very long time. Today, I will be discussing about the allergy, especially its diagnosis and treatment. Now, allergy is a very common disease. It's not a single entity, it's a group of diseases. Question, and it is common. It is said that at least 40% of the world population, they are suffering for one or another form of allergy. In India, it is again estimated that 20 to 30 percent of the persons living in this country had one or another form of allergic disease. So what I'm trying to say that it's a common disease, common problem. Most of the doctors come across the cases of allergy. Today what I will be dealing is how to suspect then how to diagnose and then how to treat allergy. Now, if you see this lady, that by seeing her face, it appears that she is talking to somebody. And on the other end, there is a person whom her relations are very good. It means she is not allergic to her. What people in misnomer use? allergy from person to person. But see the next photo where this lady talking to again another person and it is clear by seeing her face that she is not in good terms to person whom she is talking. So what is actually allergy? Allergy is a term what actually what I believe is misused a variety of unexplained phenomena being labeled as allergic diseases when people do not understand about the disease. And actually what allergy means, it's ability of animals and humans to develop altered response to foreign substance after repeated exposure. What will happen? Somebody will be exposed for the first time he will develop sensitivity to that particular thing and when subsequently he will be exposed again, he might develop allergy to that particular element. So, after first exposure usually allergen to anatopic, allergen to anatopic person develop Ig which is a immunoglobulin responsible for allergic type 1 allergic disorder. And on subsequent exposure to the same allergen, allergen symptoms may develop. Another term we use while we talk about the allergy is the genetic atopy. What is atopy? Atopy is genetic susceptibility to develop IgE against common allergen encountered in the environment. And if you want to translate atopy into a biochemistry, what would be the changes? Mainly the serum Ig in such individual will be high, may be high. What are the allergic diseases? I said it is a group of conditions. Allergic diseases most common are nasobronchial allergy. As name suggests, nasal allergy means allergic rhinitis in which person sneezes, have rhinorrhea, usually have a seasonal background and this occurs recurrently. 
Second is bronchial. Bronchial means it's a bronchial asthma. So these are two common. That's why we always say nasobronchial allergy is a commonest form of allergy. Then eyes may be involved. A skin may be involved. In the skin, you may get atopic dermatitis. You may get arctic areas. You may get angioedemas. There may be food allergy. There may be anaphylaxis, systemic anaphylaxis. You must have heard if somebody gets anaphylaxis to many drugs like penicillin, very popular. And then there could be drug allergy. There could be insect allergy. There could be many more forms of allergy. So this is a group of conditions. Like you see here, asthma, one of the commonest allergic diseases. Allergic rhinitis is another common allergic disease. Allergies of eyes may happen. A skin allergy in form of arctic areas, in form of angioedemas, in form of atopic dermatitis. There could be food allergy to many food items which we commonly eat. So these are the things by to whom the person may develop allergy. The things to which person develop allergy is also known as allergen, means this causes allergy. What are the various forms of allergen? It could be pollens. Pollen means trees, herbs, herbs. Usually the what herbs and herbs pollen, you know pollens, animals, uh, trees, you have got two type of pollination. One is wind pollination, another is insect pollination. Now, since wind pollinated trees, herbs, herbs, their pollen may travel for a long distance. They come into the atmosphere very easily. So they are the main pollens. Insect pollinated, since there is a nectar, so pollen also comes into the atmosphere, but the load is not very high. Then apart from pollen, pollen may have seasonal, Variation may have perennial, so there are certain pollens which may be perennial. So fungus may be there, house dust, cotton dust, paper dust, grain dust. In these, usually you get a mites. Mite is a dollar. and dust mite is very common, what you call dust mites. They are geological organisms present in the atmosphere, present in the either house dust or paper dust. So, Food items, food additives, drugs, insect bite, stings, medicines, drugs, contacts like oil, soap, cosmetics, perfumes, silk, chemical, one, anything can cause allergy. Now, when we talk of allergy, we also talk of a pollen calendar. I always say that if you want to practice allergy, then you have to be knowing the pollen calendar. Although now pollen calendars are ready made available, what do you mean by pollen calendar? Suppose you find that there is a neem tree. You see what is known as in botanical name is Asia directa. And in Asia directa you see in this table, if you see that there are white flowers on the neem tree in month of March, April. So you find that the Asia director pollen calendar will be March, April and May. So wh why we should know the pollen calendar? Because when symptom wise, when you want to correlate, suppose somebody is getting symptoms worst in these months and suppose you find that uh, allergy testing, it is positive, then this could be an important allergen. And something you found positive which may not be correlated with the history may not be an important allergen, what I am trying to say. That is why pollen calendar is, to know pollen calendar is very important. And for pollen calendar, I always say you need not to mug up. You see the fauna and flora around you, you recognize every plant and then you find that when they pollinate, when they, when, what is their flowering season? That is the season for the pollen. So, you have got many fungus which may cause allergy. You may got many insects which may cause, like you see, honeybee, wasps, 
mosquitoes, housefly, cockroaches, moths and so on. You may get a lot of dust where there are a lot of mites are there. You get mites like dermatophagites and other blumia like mites. And you see in this house there is lot of fungus. So, here fungal allergy is very common. So, anything you know that around you may cause, may become allergen and may cause allergic reaction. How to diagnose allergy? Now, to diagnose allergy, there are clinical ways to diagnose and there are laboratory ways to diagnose. Now, in clinical ways, of course, history is very essential, physical examination is very essential and then in lab, you may do like in vivo a skin test, usually prick test is done, interdermal test sometimes, patch test may also be done, challenge test sometimes are done and in vitro means you take out the blood and then you find out specific Ig against certain allergens and that is known as a blood test. So, what I am trying to see all the three things are together. In isolation I may tell here. In isolation, no test is perfect. So, what you have to combine together? You have to correlate history with a skin test and sometimes with blood test to find out exact allergen responsible in that particular patient causing allergy. So, history you find is very important. One cannot uh, emphasize the uh, importance of history in any disease. So, it is more true in, with allergic patient and in allergy history is mainly directed towards establishing the underlying cause. As you know in patient enters in our uh, OPD usually we find that whether he is suffering from allergic disorders I have already enumerated uh, asthma, rhinitis, skin. So, you can very easily find it out. But what history, detailed history tells us to what are the underlying cause, what are the various allergens which may be responsible for this allergy. So, history is very specialized and it consumes time. I usually say you have to act like a CBI officer to interrogate the patient who is suffering from allergy to find out what are the actual allergens that may be responsible for the patient. For that you have to take history in very detail. Now, specialized case sheets are available and history when you finish the history it discovers whether patient has allergic disease or one and whether one it also discovers the underlying causes. How we suspect allergy? To suspect allergy there are five points I always tell. First, the allergic disease, suppose somebody is having asthma, somebody is having rhinitis. Now, asthma and rhinitis may have other factors, may not be allergic. So, how you find out that whether this rhinitis is allergic in origin or this asthma has allergic background. So, for that five issues I always tell, usually allergic diseases, their onset starts from childhood. Not that allergy will occur at the age of 56, although late onset asthmas are known, but usually they occur during childhood. Then family history usually with allergic patient, we ask about many of our residents do not ask about the family history. Family history chances of because atopy runs into the families. And when we ask family history, what we try to find out whether any family member who are blood related, they also suffer from any atopic disease because it is a atopy which is inherited. Suppose son is suffering from asthma, mother may suffer from allergic rhinitis, mother may suffer from skin allergy. So, family history, it is said that if both the parents are allergic, chances of getting allergy in offspring is about 50 percent. If single parent is allergic, chances are around 20 to 25 percent. If none are allergic, still there are chances that about 10 to 15 percent the patient may get allergy. 
So, family history is very important. And usually in allergic patients, what you find is a combination of symptoms. Like you find most of the asthma patient, they are also have rhinitis. They may also have skin allergy. So, combination of diseases or combination of symptoms are possible. There could be a seasonal variation. We have talked about pollens. There are many pollens which are seasonal. Some are perennial. So, many times patients of asthma, they come to us, rhinitis comes to us that they get these symptoms particularly in a particular season. And we talk of a season, there are three seasons and apart from these three, winter, summer and rainy, what you have change of season. Change of season do happen when winter comes and when winter goes. So, during the change of season, you find there is a lot of flowers, lot of pollens in the atmosphere. That is why there is a seasonal variation. There could be geographical variation. When I say geographical variation, the not that geography will change in within a short distances, maybe 500, beyond 500. Somebody lives in Lucknow, he goes to Bangalore, he gets allergy. That is a geographical. Because Fauna and flora in Bangalore is different than fauna and flora in Lucknow. So, that we have to. So, if you find in any person who is suffering from allergic disease and you find all these five points in them, then you may say that yes, here is the patient where he chances of allergic background is very high. So, with this suspicion, you do, uh, I mean, you do physical examination also. Physical examination, one thing you should be very clear. If the patient is in remission, you may not get any finding. Only history would be there. Suppose somebody said, I had seasonal breathlessness. At present, patient has come, he is in phase of remission. No, no problem. So, no finding. So, mainly the examination is done, of especially, particularly to those areas like nasopharynx, conjunctiva, lung and skin where allergic diseases really happen. Then after the history, good history, you when you find that patient is, chances of allergy is very high, you do a skin test. Usually prick test is done and prick test, what you find that there is a method to do a prick test and this is the example of prick test and if there are certain drugs which are uh, stopped before doing the prick test. And then in 15 to 20 minutes, you read the prick test. You quantify it and find out which are the positive allergens. Usually 2 to 4 plus positive allergens, they are taken as significant. 1 plus positivity, if it is not correlating very specifically, usually neglected. Then Another test which is very popular nowadays, people are going for it, is the blood test. When in which you detect allergic specific Ig antibodies. And this is not indicated in every patient. This is indicated especially when there is a skin problem where you cannot do a skin test. Those who cannot abstain from antihistamine therapy, those who are uncooperative, and those high risk of anaphylaxis. But unfortunately, nowadays everybody is running behind this blood test, but blood test also cannot confirm. So, I said that no test in isolation can give you the right, uh, right idea. So, everything history, skin test and sometimes when skin test you want to further confirm, you can do a blood test and that gives you the right idea about the allergens. Sometimes you have to perform organ challenge tests, easily done at the research level. And then finally, how to treat? If you have diagnosed, then how to treat it? Now, allergic disease treatment, there are four components, I say. One is the avoidance. Suppose I am somebody is allergic to milk, somebody is allergic to cat, dander are something which can be avoided like we, what we use and something that is the best way of treatment. But if you cannot avoid it, then there are measures which can reduce the exposure 
to that particular things. Like somebody has mite allergy, you cannot remove mites 100 percent. So, what you can follow the dust avoidance measures, mite reduction measures. So, that may be useful. So, in like wise, so either you avoid it completely or you reduce its exposure, that is one of the essential component of allergic management. Then drugs are also used, you know, if somebody has a skin allergy, mostly antihistaminics and other drugs. Somebody has asthma, you know, inhaled drugs are used to manage asthma. Anaphylaxis, you know, you have to use drugs. So, drug treatment is another component. The third component when you manage allergic diseases are immunotherapy. You must have heard about vaccine. We make vaccine, we combine those allergens to whom he is positive not only by skin, not only by blood, but by it is when it is correlated with the history also. It means you find the real culprit and then you combine and give the same vaccine starting from a smaller dose to higher to the to the to the most tolerated dose I, with the idea that the person will be hyposensitized, will be sense will, will be hyposensitized and he will not react what he is actually reacting that is known as immunotherapy. Immunotherapy basic principle is as you know it is it is a poison you give the same poison as a Hindi mein log kehte hai jahar ko jahar maarta hai wohi principle immunotherapy ka hota hai aap chori chori dose se usko badhate hai aur usse ye ye isko tolerate tolerance will develop and patient may not develop symptoms when exposed to certain type of allergen and finally, the fourth component of treatment of allergy is education. You know anything is useless without education. So, we have to provide education about the allergy, what is allergy, how it is diagnosed, how you can avoid, if you cannot avoid how you can reduce the exposure, then what is what drugs you have to take, self management you have to address and then in certain situation required immunotherapy can be used. So, health education is a very important package for management. So, it is a comprehensive package where you use avoidance, pharmacotherapy, immunotherapy and education together to manage a patients of allergy. So, I have come to end of my lecture and my take home messages are you know you have understood by now. Allergy is an important cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. Needs good amount of time to complete workup, history and physical examination. Careful history discovers underlying causes. Knowledge of aerobiology, pollen calendar is very important. Physical examination, skin test, lab test confirms the etiological diagnosis suggestive by the careful history and must correlate skin and lab test with history to find out the real culprit. In the management package, best is to avoid or reduce the exposure to allergen, pharmacotherapy and sometimes allergen specific immunotherapy. It could be subcutaneous, it could be sublingual therapy. Sublingual therapy is usually not, uh, I mean still not um, cleared by the government and in a properly selected patient. Many people ask me a question, what is the role of immunotherapy? But what I am saying to say, if you find, if you select a proper person, so what we are, um, so allergen specific immunotherapy is, so it could be very effective provided you choose a right person, you find out the right allergen and quality allergen you may find and you if you use immunotherapy you may get a wonderful result and of course without education nothing is complete as far as management of allergy is concerned so ladies and gentlemen i come to end of my presentation and you see that the the it's a common problem and its management its diagnosis and management is very important thank you very much